Blog Talk Radio. I'll take the night, I'll take the night. 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 Cause you have a heart that's divine. Deserving you all, girl, you're mine. Eternity's ours, yeah, you're mine. We'll live the life, I'll take the night. Welcome to Blog Talk. Well, I said welcome to Blog Talk. Welcome to Take the Night, and I'm your host, Boyd, with co-host D. Sean and Angelica Martinez, and it's Monday. Thank you for joining us, and I'm not sure if we're having, I don't know, for you guys that listen to our past show, we had some technical difficulties, so I'm not sure if we're having those problems again. I'll see you in a moment. Uh on our last show, the co-host couldn't get on the line. So just bear with me, and um, we'll see what's going on. But, yeah, the topic for tonight's show is Mercury Retrograde. And, yeah, so we'll we'll discuss that and um, things, I'm sure. How are you doing, Angelica? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm good. So you were able to get on, I see, today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because, uh, you know, how you couldn't get in here last time. You, when the show started, I was like, welcome to Blog Talk. Or I was like, oh, my God, I said Blog Talk. I mean, welcome to Take the Night. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Um, oh, there goes D. What's going on, D? Hey, everything's good. How's everybody? I'm good. I'm chilling. Good. Uh, and Helica's in? Yeah, I'm in. Yeah, she's here. Hey. Hey, everybody. She was able to get in hey, today. She, yeah, I know, uh, right? No problems. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah, problems indeed. today. So, so yeah, um, I want to say thank you to those listening that do listen to Take the Night. We appreciate it a lot. And, yeah, uh, to have you hanging out with us. And I know, um, I just want to say I hope everyone's getting through having a good, you know, smooth selling moving forward in this moon phase. And and if you're not, I hope you shift that mind frame and get through it and get to a better, better end. But, yeah, tonight's topic is Mercury Retrograde. And I called in Helica today and... She figured it would be a good thing that we talk about Mercury being in retrograde. And then when I called D, D, D was like, yeah, that sounds like what's up. So why don't you spearhead us into this, Angelica? <laughs> okay. Um, well, when you talk about Mercury retrograde, uh, we're talking about uh, the literal, um, the literal going backwards or the orbit of the planet Mercury actually uh, going backwards to the sense where it looks like it's stopped or actually does go backwards. So that's why, you know, you have to look at it as, um, you know, when something is going backwards or is not moving forward, you know, things tend to not go right. You know, so that's why a lot of the times people um, have miscommunication. You know, they get very frustrated easily because people are understanding, you know, or they're unable to communicate properly or, you know, agreements or contracts or things, you know, fall through. Um, You know, even the Internet, you know, and, and phone things happen. I mean, we experienced that last week. I mean, I couldn't call in. It kept on hanging up. And then, you know, (laughs) towards the the end of the session, you know, my phone literally falls. It falls to pieces. And I'm like, oh, great. You know, so, you know, a lot of things tend to go awry because that energy isn't flowing. It is, like, basically, like I said, the energy is going backwards. It's, It's being kind of stopped. So, um 
you know, that's what happens in Mercury retrograde. So a lot of times, you know, or you'll start to see, you know, don't blame me, blame Mercury retrograde because people do, you know, tend to be really sensitive. Um, Because of miscommunication, it really brings about um, the importance of being able to express yourself in words or, you know, in thought or in, you know, art or in whatever that you're doing. So um, having a an energy that kind of is pushing back on that and making it difficult, it would be very frustrating and very aggravating, um, to say the least. So, you know, that is just like kind of this basic information um, in regards to Mercury and what it means when it goes retrograde, basically kind of going in a backwards motion instead of forward, so it appears that it is not moving. Yeah, it's like an it's like an optical illusion, right? Like it just looks mm-hmm. like some like it's going backwards. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um yeah, yeah, D exactly. had yeah. D, D D had some really good insight on it also when I spoke to him. D why don't you share Yeah. Well <clears throat> And my understanding of of Gemini going retrograde, or Mercury, I'm sorry, going retrograde, is um, I tie that into myself in the sense that you know, being a five energy, you know, it, it relates to the five number five in, in numerology as well. And five does deal with change, abrupt change, and um, unseen change. So, you know, it's like <clears throat> now the traditional sense is, you know, if you look at it from a, a totally astronomical viewpoint, it does deal with limitations, holding up progress, so to speak. But in looking at it more in depth, I look at it from not only astrological standpoint, but also the numerological standpoint. And as I mentioned just a moment ago, it deals with change, Refinement. Um, it and with all signs, what I'm I'm going to recognize is it. It really goes back to your intention, how you feel about it, and how you can utilize that energy. Because it's it's, it's all a part of us. So if you if you look at it from the standpoint of not saying that there's a limitation for you and uh, in the forefront of that you're going to have to deal with, recognize that's going to be your opportunity to make changes within your realm or your own world. Um, recognize this, that things that, that you might have planned may not work out, but it could very well work out for the best. So you look at it from a, more of a, a positive standpoint. That's what I, that's how I look, try to look at everything, really. So I look at it from more of a positive aspect first. And if I don't understand it, I, I stay neutral. So that's that's basically my take on on that Mercury retrograde energy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, see the way the with the way things are down here on this planet with me, it seems like Bree's always in damn retrograde in terms of communication. <laughs> so <laughs> with myself personally, because with me. You know, my my best friend is most, is that moon. So, and uh, so, and I, the one thing I noticed from my perspective is how these two things are happening at the same time. We have this moon building up to the full state, and then we have what they call Mercury in retrograde, which the moon causes people to get into their their subconscious, their deep emotions, or it levels people up, and they can be a little, a little extra, or if one if a person's been constantly putting intention out there to be leveled, then you're just extra leveled. So I found it I found it interesting how Mercury going into retrograde, knowing that all that's happening. What I just stated, also, it seems like there's is set up for a lot of misunderstandings and chaos to to go on in the realm right now, and miscommunications. 
But the way I look at it is it's not like a general thing. The way I see it is between individual to individual. Like I could have perfect communication with, this is an example here, with Angelica, but for some reason D&I's communication is a little off. Like we could have some misunderstandings or he may see, and this is, again, um, this is uh, an example. He may see me uh, disagreeing with him when I actually, from my perspective, seem like I, I, I know that I am agreeing. It's just like tomatoes, tomatoes, I might be saying something different in a way in which it seems like I'm disagreeing. And then that's, that's, that's how, for me, in essence, how a lot of the miscommunications tend to play out like a lot of with me at least a lot of times I'm agreeing with the person in front of me but they seem to think that I'm not agreeing so yeah uh I definitely see see mercury being in retrograde as something that somebody should pay attention to from a certain perspective personally me I don't really pay too much attention to it because again I I like to I like to use that moon energy. It's that closest clock for me personally, just myself. And the way I see it is if I have an intent, then my intent trumps these, these, these farther out bodies and what they kind of bring. Though, yeah, if I'm not conscious to just use it, like if I'm, when I'm using that moon clock, I'm conscious to when people are off, period, anyway. Uh, so Mercury being in retrograde just seems to be some extra, an extra obstacle that I need to pay attention to. And around these times, I just tend to keep it real low key and don't say much, especially to those in front of me, because it's it's the time where we can get ourselves into just unneeded miscommunications and uh, dramas and arguments and if you're trying to sustain a peace of mind, that's not the move, at least for me. I don't get off on that kind of stuff. Uh, do, do any of you two know what's been going on in the mainstream? Because I don't pay attention much, but the mainstream always tends to back up a lot of these things. Like you can see when there's a lot of uh, disarray going on in the mainstream, if you're conscious of what's going on above us, it always tends to be in alignment. Yeah, do so, do uh, any? The only thing I've noticed is the uh, the issue with the with the, with our so called fearless leader, uh, President Trump, and the the communications. I don't know if you might have heard a little that, um, segment. I heard this. How I heard about it in regards to. Um, when he was getting ready to sign the budget, this trillion dollar budget um, that the mm-hmm. House and the Senate had had, had um, put on this on his um, desk, and he he tweeted uh, somebody in his office. He, he instructed to tweet that you know I'm not going to sign this, and you know this is this is outrageous. This is not exactly what I wanted, but all the time he was signing it while that tweet was going out. So it was like, yeah, he's playing it. You know, but some people really took it to heart. And the, but all the time it was just a, a it seemed like a, a prank, really. He had some, some people like, going in one direction and he changed that, you know. Seems, seems like miscommunication, which is also uh, – something that comes along with the mercury and retrograde thing but but again with me it's something that goes on whenever the moon's going up big because you got people in different you know different heightened states whether it's a, a heightened low state or a heightened high state so but but see, see that seems to be in alignment with understanding that the masses are going to be heavily affected by something and then you know Feeding off of it with with the little pump fake here. I, I didn't know that yeah. happened. <laughs> yeah, that's that's, yeah. that's yeah. pretty interesting. I, I want. I want. Go, go ahead. ahead. I was about to no, mention too. It's really it's really a trifecta, in a sense that you know, not only is Mercury and <clears throat> Mercury in retrograde, 
in the moon phase that we're in, but also we are still in the beginning of our, the celestial new year, you know, being, and we're going to Aries. Actually, springtime, it should be, at least from the way I look at things from a common sense standpoint, it would appear as though the new year will begin in spring when things are coming into life. But in this this society we live in, springtime or, or the new year is during the winter time. Go figure. But that's that's another aspect that we can look at too, because we are what three days out. Uh, it's actually the twenty sixth, so it's almost five days out, five six days out from the new year or the first day of spring. So it's a uh, it's really. As more than I spoke earlier, I thought I said, maybe this this is really a good time for for one who's trying to make a change in their life, or transform a certain aspect of their life. This would be a good time to begin that process. You know, you're you're completely you're right. Doing. You're right, and it it goes again. It goes back to where with that. It goes back to what you're focusing on. That's why I'm always mm-hmm. going to go back to what we focus on because if we are focusing on the wrong things or things of uh, uh, some kind of something that makes us feel uh, unoptimistic, then you're just going to, you're going to loop yourself back into a past cycle and you don't get a new beginning. No doubt. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So it's key that we, we change our focus and, get away from things and people that keep us in some kind of perpetual down. Like, um, that's why everything ties together. If you, you want, you're looking for a new beginning, but yet you keeping them same old people around that tend to pull you backwards. You see what I mean? Like, it's like mm-hmm. two steps forward, five steps backwards, or trying to mm-hmm. run up uh, a landslide hill. You, you know, it's like you're not getting anywhere fast, but you're put, you're exerting a lot of energy, and then we, we'll tend to wonder why we didn't make any leaps forward. And uh, just to be uh, a little more specific, it's like let's say I have friendships or, you know, an intimate relationship, and there's this uh, – because, you know, why do they say you can't teach your old dog new tricks? It's because those subconscious – things that become habit in people are always going to cause a, most people around a certain time in their cycle to fall back into old ways, right? Persistence is scarce um, when it comes to uh, the ma- a majority, meaning like, you know, persistence is, is something that the few hold. So knowing that persistence is something that few hold Within what it what it boils down to is when in those people's cycles or in our own cycles do we fall off, and then we go back into our old ways, and then that's when if you're dealing with friends or uh, you're in a relationship with somebody, when you could be going into in your into your in your life you could be feeling real great, and you're going into this this time where you feel like you have like like a like a boost an energy boost and something's pushing behind you and helping, helping you move forward and you're ready to just conquer the world. And then somebody in your world that's just like next to you, they step into your lane and their action, something they do since they're attached to you, you guys have a relationship of some kind ends up pulling you, you get into some emotional state that throws you completely out of, that state you were in where you were feeling like you could do anything and you were, you know, the sky was the limit. And that's why it's key that we, we, we you know, trim the, trim the fat. It's like, you know, you ever see somebody when, you know, those people like, like I watch chef shows, you know, like when they're cooking the steak, they're like cutting off the fat because that shit mm-hmm. don't taste good when it's a bunch of it. So, you know, in life we got to trim the fat every once in a while so so we can get a more clear cut you know idea of what is in our own energy that's throwing us off 
that has nothing to do with some external energy body like a person you're friends with or in a relationship with because it's hard to tell if you're always with someone all the time when the person next to you's energy is affecting you in some kind of way in which it's throwing you off or if it's just you because you'll always kind of have somebody around you to where you can kind of say, okay, you know, we tend to point the finger away from us, right, in life. So it's hard to see if there's something that is in us only. So, yeah, that's, that's just me tying to what you're saying, D, about how this should be a new beginning. Yeah, you're right. But how can it be a new beginning if we're doing the same old shit? Nothing but the truth. <laughs> yeah, it, makes, hey. it makes no sense. So, Not even. like, yeah, it makes no sense. So just to get in the energy, so we speak on, like, res- like solution, right? And we don't just get stuck in saying uh, in some kind of theory. The way I tend to try to I, – I, I keep myself in, like, a fluid, new kind of way, new kind of mind, new kind of energy where I'm not finding myself stagnant is I'll, like, I get into new things. Like, I watch different things. Like I can tell in my my own self when the same old things aren't like doing it for me anymore. It's you know because I feel like we can watch things because we're comfortable and we're used to watching them. And even when that shit is boring, some people will continue to watch it and not realize that when something you normally do becomes boring, let's let's just take it to like. Uh, or or just, like, when it becomes too complicated, too much thoughts into it, you're putting too much thought into it, that's the time to step away from it. And and normally with me, that means, like, I'm supposed to be doing some work somewhere else. Like, I haven't picked up, you know, um, I haven't created a musical sound in a couple months, and that's cool. I don't feel any kind of way. It's not no block. Or because you know, a lot of times people create these these illusionary things like writer's block. Like for me, it, I just follow the way I feel, and it doesn't feel like I should be doing that right now, and it's okay. So, so instead of getting stuck trying to do something that my current spirit isn't into, let's 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 test the waters in other places real quick and see where, you know, my interest will get pulled deep into it where time flies and it's not like I'm I'm doing a job or something. You guys feel what I mean mm-hmm. with that? Oh, that, oh, that oh makes yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, I also and, like, and even like, going to new places, too. Go ahead, D. Mm-hmm. I was about to add in regards to, to looking at it from, uh, from that standpoint and you know, being a – opportunity to create, you know what I mean, that, that, that change you're looking for, you know, because the bottom line is that, you know, so many times people wait for things to change rather than really recognizing the opportunity to change and change. You know, so that, that sounds like an oxymoron, but, you know, that's, I'm, I'm realizing more and more that, um, but you put your focus to just like you said, boy. You know, it's what you put your focus on. You can benefit from the energy we got, even though, from a broader standpoint, it's just everything's supposed to be going backwards or not moving at all. But yeah, I I, I use this use this little scenario uh, as an example. You know, sometimes when I'm in traffic, and I live in a city. So when I'm in traffic and I know some alternate routes to get beyond the point where I know there's, and I can see up ahead maybe probably about a half a mile, I see there's some, everything stops me. And I choose this alternate route and everything worked out just fine. I'm able to get beyond that traffic and continue on. Or I say the traffic is all jammed up. And I said, hmm, I'm, I pull over to this uh, strip center and either get something to eat or maybe just look around. You know, just might just um, have books in the car, so I just stop and leave until the traffic died down. And so then instead of stressing over the traffic, I try to find alternate routes to deal with it. 
you know, mm-hmm. as I was here in Texas, you know, is well known for what they call uh, road rage. <laughs> you know, people just get upset because somebody might cut them off. I said, man, that's what? That's that's a choice they make. But I, I choose to just chill out, you know, and uh, not not get involved in the uh, the the struggle of dealing with the uh, the traffic as it is. So, it, it, you know, what you said kind of reminds me of how it's possible to try too hard. You know, when mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. want something, yeah. when, we, when we want something sometimes, we will try too hard. And you see that a lot, like with people who may have some kind of insecurity because someone around them may always doubt their work acumen, like always questions their their work, they are doing work, that person will tend to overcompensate and try too hard to do to be moving all the time to where you end up being counterproductive because there is something called, you know, correspondence. And we mm-hmm. tend to forget about how we have to correspond. It's not just about, you know, you can't plant a seed whenever the hell you want to. You have to correspond with the seasons, the season. You know, you can't just plant in, you know, winter when everything is cold. You could if you want, but you're not going to get anything. So that's it's key when you're saying, like, detours, right? Like, in mm-hmm. terms of Mercury being in retrograde and things being at a halt, it's not every – see, this realm is multidimensional, and everything – to us in our actions and everything we do is also multi multidimensional. So like meaning you're a layered personality. Like, yeah, you do music or or I do music. I also do take the night. I also graphic design, right? One of those things may have some kind of halt that could be associated with Mercury being in retrograde. If it's you know because people say things in general come to a halt. But that doesn't mean all of them will. Now, you know, right. if you believe if you believe in you know these lo- these things that people say about you know Mercury being in retrograde to the point to where it's law to you, then you're going to spell yourself into having a halt in everything because you also have power over your own mind and power with your mind. So if we know writing something is spelling something, which is why the, you know, there's a spell book. A spell book is nothing but things written down. Like, let's just say mantras written down, laws written down, prayers written down. That's what the spell book was in its origin. For your subconscious, not to do weird shit to other people, but to get you in a right state of mind where you're getting production out of yourself. Because remember, magical things are to push production in yourself and in your reality. And we know this starts with our own minds because the universe is mental. So it's less to do with other people and other things as it is to do with your own subconscious mind. So I say that because like, again, you know, you hear, like Angelica said, don't blame me, blame Mercury being in retrograde. That's when things become a little, uh, it's like, you know, blaming, you know, like, oh, I'm a Scorpio. Like, I never say that because I don't believe that the things that are listed under Scorpios, I don't believe, I believe they're set, they're put there because that's like a basic root kind of example. But if one's working on different things in their personal life, you can transcend these things. So basically what I'm saying is Mercury being in retrograde, if you believe, like, yeah, Mercury's in retrograde, so so I guess everything is going to stop for me, you're, you're, you're speaking a spell into existence that's going to be true for you. So everything will stop for you. Mm-hmm. Everything will well, no. stop for you because – you are saying it is. You're speaking. You didn't write it down, but someone else did, and you read it. So you read the spell, right? If I read a book, that book, we don't 
see it this way anymore, but that book of ideals and theories is a spell book. It's a book of someone else's uh, conceptions, right? And if you subscribe to those things you read, you take on the spell. That means this person's cast a spell on you. It's not as, it's not sinister like you see in the movies, but you now believe you, your mind now thinks like theirs. They washed your brain, so it's a spell. It could be a positive spell. It could be, but regardless, you now think differently than you thought prior to coming in contact with something that was spelled out and something that could be read. It's a spell. So that's why I'm saying, like, you know, I think people get a little carried away with the whole Mercury. I hear it, but I, like I, like me and Helga talked earlier, I, I, I don't pay any attention to it because I, I, I tend to work with the moon. So the moon is my clock for me. And if I, if I start seeing people, you know, I, I pay attention around me too. I go inside out instead of outside in. Like, I'm not reading the book and then looking forward to me. I'm trying. I'm trying to uh, attach back to my intuition. We, you know, we say the ancestors speak to us. That you know, if you know the ancestors speak to you, you and you take that a little farther. That means that's your DNA, and you're trying to wake up certain aspects of your DNA. Therefore, you can wake up certain uh, layers of information that may have been latent inside of you. So if we say these things, we need to believe in these things and we need to, you know, have a little more faith in what we know and feel is true from our own individual perspectives. Like I'm talking on take the night to whoever's listening, but ultimately you need to know, you need to follow, get into the rhythm of your own intuition and your own ideals and your own thoughts and your own beliefs and your own creative way of doing things, because that's your magic. I'm speaking things that work for me, and Helic is speaking things that work for her. D is speaking things that work for him. We're not creating a zombie cult. And I just had to, I don't know, it took me there. So ultimately, you know, you need to, you need to create, you need to, you need to kind of get into your own rhythm and just follow the way of thought that you're hearing here. Like you're never going to hear me just say, yeah, I believe what I say or I believe ultimately in what I read here. What I do is I just go with the flow. And to just go yeah. to just tie to this this whole this whole the the Mercury thing, right? Just real quick. I was talking to Angelica today earlier, D. And mm-hmm. uh she she brought up how things go um like like there's also a thing that I guess says don't do things with money and contracts around this time. That's what Angelica shared with me, right? Because Mm -hmm. they will go awry through miscommunication or maybe your lack of focus to read those words. You know, it's going to be a number of things. Like you may be off in your head, so you may miss a clause and then you fuck yourself up, right? But anyway, uh, about a, uh, like, I want to say a week, but it might have been like a couple days less than a week. I had this dream, right? And I and it, this was a go a week ago or a, le- a couple of days ago, um, where in the dream there was a situation where I could get thousand dollars worth of coins, right, or a condo that was in the sky rise building. I don't under, I don't remember what I was doing prior to it. You know how these things pick up like frames, and the story's already going. So. Mm-hmm. I remember taking the condo because I'm thinking in the space, in the in the dream space, like I'd rather have a place to live with no, with not having to have a mortgage. It was going to be paid for rather than taking this 25,000 or, you know, not to blow that shit. Right. And then, so I took the condo, right? D? But turns mm-hmm. out dude tells me in the dream that in a month, I would have to take a hundred thousand uh, dollars of my money towards uh, like then it has something to do with the condo, and I was like, oh hell no, right? But because I was like, I'll take the, you know, I'll take the twenty five thousand, and you know, then then having to do that. But it turned out he was like some kind of kind of like weird snaky kind of character, and he was like, well. 
You should have, you should have, you know, thought of that before. But it was like he didn't tell me. But it was clearly up to me to have saw it. But this was just a dream. So when I'm talking to Sarah about it the other day, I'm like, this is just to tell me right now to to be thorough in things of dealings to like read the fine lines and just do that and not jump into things. And then I talked to Angelica Day on the phone and she tells me about how, you know, they also say don't deal with contracts and things with money. And I found that was what people call synchronicity, right? Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. people say these things all the time, like synchronicity. And it's like, okay, Not only are we we, to just to notice the synchronicity and to bring it up in common conversation, that's cool. But what does it mean? That's what you need to figure out, what it means to you, what the synchronicity means to you. And that's all I was saying, because something to do with all this Mercury being in retrograde is, is, you know, I had no clue that it was going into retrograde, but it ended up something ended up kind of telling me from the realm of the subconscious about how to move. And then a hell could just clarify to me in the real world, what people call the real world, right? Where, where that dream was really tying to. And that's, see, that's outside. That's, that's from the inside out, not from the outside in. And, and this is nothing exclusive to me. That's the point I want to get across. You yourself, whoever can, can go from the inside out also and then what happens is you gain more confidence in the messages you receive the dreams that you remember and 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 you end up tying these dreams and these messages to things happening around you and realize it's just clarifying you know a a thing about you that people think is science fiction so that's all I was saying there and Helica I think you were finna say something I just wanted to Finished. I'm sorry, lady. Man, I'm like totally. I got caught up in what you were saying. I totally forgot what I was gonna say. But my bad. It is. It's. It's cool. You know, it happens sometimes. But it is very. You know, I agree with you in regards to synchronicity and finding. You know, what certain things mean to you. You know, and also what you said about. Um, you know, we're not here to make zombies. It's like, no, this is just supposed to be an inspiration. That's why we just, like, have a conversation. Um, you know, inspiration to, you know, spark something within you to, you know, do your own research, you know, find out what it means to you. What do you find out? What's your own perspective on it? You know, you know, gain the information um, and go from there. And, You know, with this whole (laughs) Mercury and retrograde, it is very interesting to see, like, the different effects that it has on people. Like, some people get very moody. Some people, you know, go into, like, their whole, you know, the whole hermit mode. Like, I don't want to deal with nobody, you know. Um, And some people just, you know, make things worse by trying to, you know, over-communicate, you know, be over um over um elaborate or over dramatic sometimes. But um it's also building up, like you said, you know, to this whole full moon full moon that's gonna be coming on the thirty first. And it's another blue moon. It's the second one of this year, which is for me it's like I find that very interesting. Like this is the second Blue moon of the year. Like, how often does that happen? And that sparked something within myself to go and do that research. Like, how often do you, you know, when's the last time we had two blue moons a year? You know, what's the most blue moon, you know, we've had in history in a year? Um, What's the answer to that? (laughs) I have no idea. You know, these oh, okay. are questions that I ponder. I'm just saying, like, these are questions that I ponder and, you know, sparks my own research. You know, it makes me wonder. And, you know, to see the different patterns is like, you know, what happened during these times that these similar types of energies were going on. 
And, you know, the full moon, this next one that's coming up, is actually going to be in Libra. And, you know, it's just like you guys were talking about, it's all about balance. You know, we have to keep that balance and understand, like, sometimes we need to, you know, just disconnect. And we don't need to speak. We just need to go within ourselves and figure certain things out. Try to do certain things differently, you know, like do a thing. Instead of going to traffic, you know, I'm just going to go pull over in this little shopping center and see what's going on. Maybe give me a little bite or read a little bit. You know, it's going to be the same amount of time as you were going to just sit in traffic. You know, so it's like you weigh it out. It's like, well, what would you rather be doing? Would you rather be sitting in traffic? Or would you rather be, you know, exploring or trying something different or reading? Um, and it's all about choices. That's the thing. It's really about choices, what you decide to do, where you put your focus and your energy and your thoughts. And also during this time, you know, things can be, you know, you can be easily distracted, you know, because it's like you don't, um, you know, because it's, it's frustrating dealing with um not being understood. So it's like you find other things to do that bring you, um, I guess, joy on some level. You know, so you kind of go to what's easy. You know, so it's kind of hard to lose focus sometimes. And that's why it's like, you know, like Boyd was saying, it's like it's a it's an evolution. It's like do you want to be stuck in the same type of system that you created or do you want to do things differently? And that's why you have to continually, you know, look within yourself and refine yourself and the things that, you know, you want to do and the things that you want to achieve and change, you know, um, yourself, your thought process, what you do, your action. So it's it's just it's, it's, it's just crazy, like I said, to see how like it affects people differently. You know, even sometimes, like, the whole, like, I knew stuff was going crazy. Like, I didn't even know Mercury was in retrograde until we had the trouble with the phone. Because I've had that happen before where, you know, Mercury in retrograde messes up literally, like, phone communication. Like, you get drop calls, you know, stuff just be acting funny. It's like, like technology-wise, the Internet be going down. I'm just like, what the heck? Yeah, my Android box has been tripping a little bit, and I, I was just like, "What is going on?" But I noticed my, you know, Wi-Fi gets a little messed up while the like during most moon cycles, like when it's building up. I noticed the Wi-Fi kind of slows down a little bit, so I, I was, I noticed that too. But it's a little bad. It's a little, a little worse in terms of what my Android TV is doing this time around. And D had mentioned something about technology when I spoke to him earlier today and how technology I, I don't remember what you said D what'd you say? D you there? It's a key part of you to yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I muted myself. Sure. Uh, <laughs> yes. Okay. yes, but uh but yeah, as you mentioned, you know, that's a that's a part of the process as well. And for technology. Uh, I have issues with technology mm-hmm. because that 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 Mercury is a very energetic Sign. It's an air sign, so it's it's going to be or well, air planet rather, but it's you know it's tied into Gemini and Libra, and both of those are air signs. So that's and that's how the the electrons flow through the air. And that's, in saying that, I recognize another thing in that if you don't pay attention to what time it is in the gods, if you don't if you're not in tune with the celestial bodies, whether it be the moon or the the various planets and where they are, you're going to be affected by them. You understand what I'm saying? So if you you don't pay attention, it's it's like a a hurricane, okay? You you walk into your own world and a hurricane is is supposed to be headed this way or a tornado. If you don't, if you don't know anything about that, um, that, that airflow, or recognizing that the, that the the temperatures are changing, you're just going to be a victim of that hurricane or that tornado. But if you have some inkling of knowing that 
okay, this is kind of energy that's coming my way. What's my best move? And you, the first thing you would do, you would really find out where the hurricane is coming from or where the tornado is coming from, and you want to go the opposite direction. But if you don't have an idea, you're just going to be a victim. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I definitely, I definitely agree yeah. with you. You don't, you don't understand, you don't know what, you basically don't, you're not looking ahead to what might be coming, and it's a cycle. Yeah. So exactly, it can be exactly. predicted and felt. Everything is a cycle for the most part. So, so no like I was telling somebody earlier, I don't know who it was, but, I, you know, I remember there was one show where I was talking about how we did, and I was talking about how everything that, leading up to that night, was kind of like trying to get me in a situation where I would lose my cool, like an obstacle after obstacle after obstacle that really had nothing to do with the choices that I made in my life, meaning it was, you know, other people's, uh, I'm just having to assist other people, which is cool, but you got to understand how some people under those circumstances lose their cool, like when they're trying to, like, uh, maybe they have something they have to do, and then, you know, they, someone else needs their assistance over and over again, and it, like, really, really bugs bugs them and throws them out because they start worrying about time. And for me, today was a similar day, and I was thinking earlier, I was like, let me, let me I, I want to find that show when I said that because it seemed like it was exactly like that day when I came on the show after having a day similar to that, but it was just today where, like, many opportunities – to to lose my cool if I wasn't conscious of myself. And that's where it comes down to being conscious of yourself and then being conscious of the decisions that we make, like like the reactions that we have to certain things also perpetuate a cycle that we are stuck in that we possibly might want to get out of. It's, again, it's, it always comes back to us. Like if you're always getting into it with the person, a lot of times the ego – makes you always want to confront them when those things start bubbling up again. But instead, you could you could save yourself the trouble if your ego wasn't involved and simply just go somewhere else. But since we get territorial around these moon times, like this, around the time when this moon's building, as why, you know, you have the werewolf, which is an animal, which tends to be territorial when you see the movies, when the moon's building, people get into their, their ego and they become very persistent in what they want, their perspective, and they kind of force their will, like Angelica was saying, they can become a little overbearing. And, you know, these, these, all these things, if we're not conscious of ourselves, end up making us push people away or snap on people and cause us to get into situations that perpetuate these cycles and these dramas that we want to jump out of. And that just goes back to what Dee was saying when he said, if you're not conscious of what's going on above you, you you end up being a victim to that. But I, I'm going to also add, you also need to be conscious of yourself while being conscious of what's going on above us, right? Because if you're not oh, yeah, conscious right. of yourself, you, yeah, you're going to keep reacting the same way you always react. That always keeps you getting caught up into some bullshit. Like, for example, right now, I get, I'm getting a lot of comments on YouTube, and a lot of people are saying things that if somebody was in their ego seeing a lot of these things, reading a lot of these things, they would be sitting there typing up a storm, responding to everybody because some people are saying things that are, like, rude and shit, right? They, they like, mm -hmm. you know, zombie rude type shit. But since my ego isn't involved, I read it, and then I keep it moving. And then I focus on the things that I want to focus on, right? I see somebody that writes something, that's cool. I, I like that and respond to them. I'm not focusing on the negative shit because there's always going to be somebody or something that's, that's going to show up in the realm to pull you into some kind of uh, opposite of where you want to be because this is a dualistic reality. The black and white checkerboard floor, you know, everyone likes to talk about that, but that's an element of what that represents, duality, you know. So you got these dualistic elements in a dualistic realm, the, the angel on one shoulder, the devil on the other, right, no commercials, 
These are all things that we have to be conscious of to know that, you know, our action when we're presented with these archetypal energies that the black and white checker floor or the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other shoulder represent, they represent something, an energy, they represent something that you face every day. Meaning, you know, that person commenting, you know, while I'm reading, having a good day, I go open my phone, got a comment, someone that is very <laughs> careless with their words, they're careless with their words and what they say to another person, if I'm if I'm sensitive and that person like literally someone commented and said, Shut up and I was just like, damn, like like you just you just took the time to say shut up. Like it was live, right? But it's not. It is like what I understand though, person has a problem in their own realm. I'm not going to let them suck me into being like them. Being like them. Like, that's that, this, there's this zombie, you know, like, you know how the zombie, and you've watched The Walking Dead, everyone watched The Walking Dead, they bite you, then you turn into a zombie, you bite the next motherfucker, they turn into a zombie, you bite the, when I, I use zombie in layers, like, there's the, the whole disease of spreading hate and, and insecurity that come out around these times where you're going to have people who are careless with what they say and it can possibly fuck up somebody's whole afternoon or if they're young enough, it can, it can damage them moving forward and they can end up being a bully that then goes around fucking up somebody else's afternoon. It's the same zombie virus. It's just happening right. with words. Yeah. 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 That's real. Well, you know, I just, I just ran across the, um, <laughs> A, a little insight that I want to share with you guys. Okay. The blue moon, the first blue moon for this year was January the 31st. This next blue moon is coming up. It's going to be March the 31st. I did I did a number breakdown on it. And the first blue moon had a seven divide, and that's a spiritual slash religious, uh, esoteric, uh, 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 a more um, energy dealing with the unseen, in other words, right? Mm -hmm. And, okay, and Mars 31st, it equates to a nine. And and nine deals with with, with completion, with um, new beginnings. It's it's all-encompassing. And you know, if you look at a nine, it's actually if you add the six and the nine, that's the yin and yang symbol. You know, it's a, a duality. You know, male female, up and down, right and left. So it's really making it clear that this year is very significant, and it says oh. that that twenty eleven is that twenty eighteen comes to eleven, and that's the master number. And then those are like twin portals or, or twin towers or twin um, posts or however you want to look at it. But that's and a they're polar, they're, to another. And they're dualistic, too. They're dualistic, yes, yes. too. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And I think going to, it's a, another dimension is opening up. It's just, of course, only those who have eyes to see and ears to hear is going to be able to find those, that, that portal. Mm-hmm. It's uh, a very interesting time we are. So interesting. I didn't realize that until yep. you know, I broke it down a bit. But, uh, Before we continue, if you're uh, – sorry, D. Uh, what are you saying? No, no. I didn't want to cut you off. No, no. Oh, okay. No, I'm finished. Before, okay, before we continue, um, if you're somebody listening in on a streaming platform somewhere – and um, when we go into the after hour, which is, you know, after two hours, we sometimes continue, and it'll just shut off in mid-conversation, and that's because you're not on the lines. The only way you can continue into the after hours is if you're on the lines. But, 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 um, uh, but also, if you have anything you would like to add or if you at some point, you know, would like to just ask a question or something like that, you can call the the call in numbers two one five three eight three five eight two two. Again, that's two one five three eight three 
888-646-5822. And we'll also be doing something a little different tonight. And Helica is going to be, you know, the one mediating the the interactions with whoever uh, um, uh, whoever the lines opened up to. And, you know, <laughs> right, right, Helica? <laughs> Uh, right? yeah, 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 it's like, it's funny, it's like, you know what makes me feel like, you know how, like, when you go into a chat, you have a, a, a chat moderator, it's like, that's me, I am the <laughs> chat moderator, so <laughs> that means, it's like, I will cut you off, just be like, all right, we're good, let's go, next person, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> But it's like, yeah, just, just so, know that I do it out of love, you know, you, because we want to give as many people time to give their perspective, you know. We can't be on here all night. All right. But, but, but yeah, so, but, you know, yeah, I know the title said Mercury in Retrograde, but you got to understand, like, everything, every past show, we've done will always elements of it will always tie into a future show and that's how you should really look at uh life also i've learned to look at life like it's a culmination of the things i read in many different places and i'll say a lot of times remember everything we know now right that we know in all these different places and we tend to compartmentalize right like like we know we should possibly add some real living things into our diets along with these other things that feed our lower selves, just our taste buds, right? But yet sometimes we'll be conscious of meditation or breathing, but then we fall off on eating. And then when that shit catches up to us, we're like, damn, how did I fall off on eating? You know, because we, we were compartmentalizing everything we knew thus far to where, you know, we t- we kind of forgot to work on or keep that balance in a certain area. I was telling Sarah, I mean, I was telling Angelica earlier today how, you know, we got this rice, this, this coconut milk and these, this brown rice cakes, and, you know, I had made a pact to myself I was going to stay away from cereal because I don't like how it makes my blood feel. And the only reason why I know it's doing something to my blood is because, I can feel, I feel like my vibration is a little slower and shit. And, you know, I got, I got, I started eating some of this cereal and, you know, I took it too far and I regretted it. So, you know, Mercury in retrograde had less to do, you know, whatever, if I could say it was that, but the moon, I'm, I know for sure when I got into my werewolf state, I went on, I went in on some damn cereal. You know, thus it was, it was, it was natural organic brown rice cereal with little to any added sugar, but I still regretted that shit just if I had popped open some honeycomb some shit. So, you know, these things affect us all differently, and, you know, that's why I was trying to, you know, I knew what I was doing, though, consciously while I was eating. I was just, I was just telling my conscious mind, it's, brown rice cereal and it's coconut <laughs> milk so it's okay uh, you know all right oh and, and, you know oh and, and, I, and none of that shit mattered at the end of the day i still was like damn why did i eat this shit i feel like i kind of regressed a little bit in terms of my my uh the way i like to feel in my body uh, though things are moving for me you know creatively and in the realm the shit tend to, you know, that I'm just tying to how Mercury and retrograde can affect you in different ways, right? Because you, you have to know yourself and pay attention to yourself to see where those blockages are. It, for me, it was more of like a, I fell into my werewolf and I went in on some damn brown rice cereal, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to just have one bowl. You know, like four boxes later, here I am, you know. So, so you know, that's how these things affect us, and that's how it affected me. Only you would know how it would affect you, right? But I don't mind telling yeah. you how it affect how, how, you know, when I fell off in my whole werewolf uh, recently, which was a couple of days ago. But I'm straight. Like, I haven't touched a cereal in two days. So, you know, and I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, there's just like so many different scenarios running through my head right now. 
because, like, even when we spoke earlier, I couldn't help but laugh because it's like everybody has their their weakness. It's like, you know, it would be hard for me to give up certain things, but it's like when I think about it, it's like I don't really eat ice cream, although if I had access to ice cream, I would turn some ice cream up right now. You know, I do have access to cereal. I love cereal, you know, but I'm not going to overdo it because it's like I know what that's like. It's like I, I, I just can't. And, you know, so to understand, you know, what you are going through, but just as, to know it's like, dude, it's freaking brown rice cereal with coconut milk. Come on. Come yeah, on. nah. <laughs> I thought I thought it was right. That's what we think, right? We go to the store. <laughs> it's funny. I'm, I'm well, glad you used that example. It, and and, it, and it is, it's, it's hilarious too because it's like then you know then you really start to understand why so many people are you know are are you know why certain people feel a certain way about certain products. It's like, dude, I noticed that. Like, that just feels funny. It's like, I could taste the difference. That yeah. just tastes weird or tastes funny. Yeah. You know, or it has a, a funny aftertaste to it. It's like, I don't know. <laughs> you know? And the shit wasn't worth it. It wasn't even worth it. Like, it, you know, I would have rather to feel off like it made me feel. I would have rather jumped into some damn cinnamon toast crunch or some shit, right? Because <laughs> then it worth it. <laughs> It, it, at least, in, at least from taste perspective, it would have been worse feeling kind of weird. You know, this brown rice cereal it was like cocoa, you know, pure cocoa, and it had that that sour cocoa aftertaste. And then yeah, you know, yeah, and I'm yeah. eating it, and I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm gonna make this shit work, you know. And you know, I got pulled in because it was tasting, it was started tasting all right, like it wasn't, it wasn't straight, but I was settling, I was settling. <laughs> And, you know, I said, you know, I have an addictive personality, so that's why I don't get into substances because that's, you know, just like I would, you know, four boxes later, I'm sitting here in on this damn cereal. That's how knowing myself, (laughs) knowing myself, how I would be with some of these more destructive things that we have in this realm to our access. And, you know, that wouldn't end well for me. He'd be like, where's boy? You know, you know, I don't know. The You know, the cereal box does it to me, so I already know I should never get into some of these other things out here. It sounds it sound like your um, wisdom gene has kicked in, boy. What did you say? Oh, sound like your wisdom gene has kicked in. You recognize oh, yeah, it's been, it's- it's been on, you know. The, the benefit of my addictive personality is in research and into things that I'm interested in. I go in, and I go in, go in, go in, go in, go in, go in. You know, you'd be like, don't you think you need to take a break? But it's like, nah, I'm straight. But that's the benefit of it all for me. But like, when it comes to like things outside of me, like, like I like like, don't let me fall into an ice cream slump. Like, don't let somebody get some ice cream and say, taste this. Because if I taste that ice cream, oh, my Lord, you're going to have to, you're going to have, you know, I'll be there every day, every day. Like, like, this is my last time. This is my last time. I love ice cream, but I can't eat it. I don't eat it because I will go in on it and I will regret it. It It makes my blood too thick. And that's what happens when we feel some kind of way Ultimately, that blood thickens up and things don't start to not flowing right. And I, I right. can't do it. I love ice cream, though. I love that yeah. ice cream. I do, but I don't eat it. And it's a sacrifice, and it's and it's horrible. It's a horrible sacrifice. But I do it to feel <laughs> good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. Everybody makes their own sacrifices. You know, gotcha. everybody does. And and that's the the beauty of it too is just like you know to understand like man I may get there one day it's like I may be like nope I'm not doing this anymore I stop doing this and it's like wow can't believe I did that you know just like how I'm looking back now it's like I can't believe I stopped eating meat a lot of people are surprised because you know I was raised on on chicken and and you know uh, carne asada all that great stuff. You know, yeah. but you and, that I love all that. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, but I, I don't I, eat I, it though. I, you know, yeah, it's like I love the smell of it. It's like, oh, it smells so good. It's like I remember what it tastes like, but it's like, nah, nah, I can't do that. Nope, not good for my body. It's just not, 
no, no, you know, and it is about making that choice, and like, and like we've been speaking about, you know, keeping that that focus, you know, that mentality during um, the times of miscommunication, and you know, not necessarily miscommunication, but just kind of at a standstill. And it's like, well, what do you do in a standstill? It's like. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to enjoy the time, enjoy the downtime. Don't, you know, be upset about it. You know, do something with that time. You know, make use of it. Like uh, Dee was suggesting earlier, just different different outlets, you know. And stay away from people that's always asking you what you're doing so you don't feel some kind of way about (laughs) being in a downtime period. Because, you know, you got to be like, yeah, yeah, that's what happens. It's all psychological. You you get into yeah. a period where you want to rest, and then you go around somebody that's nosy as fuck, that always you know likes to be in your business, and then you start to reflect about yourself, and then therefore you start to overcompensate in action in a time period where you should be relaxing. You know, that's what you. That's why you got to know yourself and the people around you and all that kind of shit. Uh huh. Yeah, good point. Good point. Yes, I'll make y'all laugh. I used to make when uh, when the children, when our children were still in teenagers, um, we would go to a mall. You know, like my daughter's always going, "Oh, dad, can you take me to the mall?" Uh, our dad ride with us to the mall. You know, me and mom, and wherever I would go, I would always have a book with me. And when they were really young, they would. They'll be, I don't know whether they're embarrassed or not, but when they'll be in the, in the stores, I'd be reading. You know, sometimes I'd be reading while I'm walking, walking in the mall with, you know, it, it kind of made them felt some kind of, well, of course they got used to it, but I said, man, all of this time, just uh, how long can you just sit and, you know, of course I'm patient, I'm waiting, and just just nothing to do, you know, when I could be using this time to be productive. Mm-hmm. You know, so I say, hey, wherever I go, even today, you know, wherever I hey, go. You know, yeah. you mm-hmm. know what, D, I'm sorry to cut you off, but they say be still and let God. You see it all the time, right? But everybody's always mm-hmm. still fucking moving. It's like it's, yep. it's kind of literal. It's kind of literal. Like, you know, you can move your way out of your blessings by Moving out of the way of your blessings. Let's say you were sitting in a coffee shop and, you know, you're looking for uh, a match, you know, your significant other to miraculously fall into your life. And right now you stop searching. You're just being still. And then somebody called you and you pick up the phone and you're like, you knew you shouldn't pick up the phone because this person's always nosy asking you what the fuck you're doing. And then it makes you start to get self-conscious. So you pick up the phone and then they start getting all of your business. So then you get heightened into that, agitated, I need to move and just do extra shit like, like a chicken with his head cut off when you really know you should be chilling, and then you get up and leave, and then the person that was coming for you comes in and sits down. Check that. That's how shit works. That's real. That, that is. If I were to that write is. Movie, exactly. If I, were, if I were to write a movie right now, I could use that in a scene, and you'd be like, oh, my gosh. You'd see it in the movie, but, like, we tend to not see the shit in our lives, right? You know, that's that's mm-hmm. how it works. It's all about right. timing, correspondence. Okay. That's what that whole mo- movie, uh, remember that movie? I didn't really like it when I watched it back then, but everyone loved it. It was like, uh, I don't remember the name. What a, what uh, I don't remember the name. About it. it was like people, they had their different... Crash, Crash, I think it was Crash. People had, you know, these different people, the movie starts, these different people in different places, and at some point their their life all take, you know, through action, take, um, end up coming, crossing paths in some oh, kind yeah, of I way. Oh, yeah, I remember that movie. Yeah. yeah that's, that's what they're telling you mm-hmm. with the movies, you know? Right. Your actions are the reason for what you receive and what you don't receive. And going back to what Dee was saying about actually taking action to making the things happen that you want to happen goes back to how I hear a lot of people talking about they're being perfectionists when they really just procrastinating or have insecurities that are stopping them from 
moving forward. And that can miss your moment, right? They say your moment, right? They say the stars are going to align, even though I will also say you have multiple moments. You have multiple star alignments, right? Because it goes back to what you are aligning through focus. So never feel like you're completely okay. out of your moment because your moment is going to come as long as you're focusing towards your moment. You, you, you create a gravitational pull that collides to your moment with your focus, if that is clear enough That's for right. people. That's so you, right. you okay. never are out of your moment. And I, I like to use uh, people because, you know, people always want shit now right like they think they they think they were supposed to get whatever it is they wanted out of life when they were young or when they're at whatever age they set up for themselves but fail to realize that in the world you have symbols of people who gain a certain kind of success at an age in which you might be feeling like you know it's over with for you and i'm gonna go mm-hmm. to like some, a couple actors just to use that realm like there are people who wanted to be actors i'm not placing and importance on acting, just to clarify that, I'm using them as people who are like you that have goals, right? Because, you know, the realm has all the kind of spookism now about certain realms right now. So I wanted to clarify that. But let's look at Billy Bob Thornton. When he blew up as an actor that started to be in all kinds of stuff, he was at an age in which feel like, you know, when they're getting up there and today, they start to get very discouraged about the success they're going to have when it comes to the roles and how much, how many scripts are going to be offered to them. But here goes a man, right? Who, who, in, when he came, when he came onto the scene, he was at an age in which, you know, you can tell persistence or, you know, alignment was really at play. With, when his success came, it came when it was supposed to come for him is the point, you know, That's right. it's not always going to come in these in these times where, you know, you think you need it. And it goes back to that Rolling Stone song, you know, you, you don't always get what you want, but you get what you need. Right. Mm-hmm. You get mm-hmm. what you need. Mm-hmm. You, so, so, so you, 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 the way I look at that for me is I had many opportunities to, to be, you know, I have opportunities to be in movies as a kid, right? But as a kid, I rejected that kind of stuff. And I don't, I don't really have the ambition to be in movies, period. But I'm just saying that's the success that someone would want. But I didn't want that. It wasn't what I, what I wanted. So, so, you know, I continued moving forward and I'm just doing whatever I like to do at my own way in my own time. And, you know, some people will look at that as a missed opportunity, but I don't look at it that way because that's another thing that tends to discourage us. Remember, it's all psychological down here. So if you Mm -hmm. fuck your own mind state up on your own perspective, your optimism towards the things that you want to achieve, you disqualify yourself from achieving because you get depressed. You get unoptimistic. You, You start to become stagnant. You start to have these thoughts oh, my gosh, I'm too old, which was my initial point bringing up Billy Bob Thornton. Oh, my gosh, nobody's going to want me because I look this way. And these, you're yeah. casting a spell on yourself, which was tying back to my mirrors video that someone told me to shut up on for some odd reason. I guess it went <laughs> over their head. But, you know, what were you about to say, D? Oh, oh I'll, I'll also mention um, Morgan Freeman. You know, exactly. He was here. Yeah, he was on. Um, I think it was uh, the Electric Factory, Electric Company, for a number of years, and uh, he got his break at I think around when he was in his fifties. Exactly. He always he he always had that aspiration. Though. So yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, he had that. Little, he was pushing to it. He was he yeah, pulling yeah. that. He was pulling that future to himself with his focus. Remember, you. You know, your thoughts are things. If you focus on it long enough, you can achieve it. They say all these things that become cliches, and but see, what fucks you up is living in this this world of time, you know, this box. See, time is a box that flips multiple times. That's why, you know, as a kid, I always saw that sand thing, that sand timekeeper where the time, where it'd be sand sitting, and then they would turn it, mm-hmm. and then the sand just falls down to the other side. See, time is nothing but a box that's flipping and if you and, and it's a box that you can put yourself into, which becomes yeah. this 
this perpetual cycle of no real movement because of what you're holding in your mind, you can, if you believe in time so much, you begin to, that spell of that box of time, you end up being put in, you put yourself in it to where you fear it now. It becomes all too Mm. real. real. And with that fear of time becomes that stress of time. With that stress and fear of time becomes that fear of running out of time, which brings more stress. Mm -hmm. Which causes thoughts Mm -hmm. of, you know, oh, my gosh, I'm old. I'm this old. Nobody's going to want me. Oh, my gosh, I'm I'm this old. I'm I'm, I'm too old to do this. I should be doing this now. All these false, (laughs) long spells that you're casting on yourself based off of an illusion called time. Yes. Yeah. When, you know, if you, you go into outer space, you know, the planets or whatever, if there's entities, which I'm sure there are, they're not sitting around like it's 12 o'clock. They're timeless. <laughs> we, another that's term right. we use, oh, I, I, that's timeless music. If you knew what that meant, really, you understand that it's showing you something greater than time. Timeless mm-hmm. is greater than time. Let's go back to math, yeah. greater than less than, right? Timeless is actually greater than being in the box of time because timeless means no matter when I put that record player on, I could be in 2018, right? This thing was made in the 70s. That shit is still mm-hmm. bumping. Timeless. <laughs> it is, it's mm-hmm. ageless. It never dies. So there is no fear of time regarding timeless. And if you go, if you read, like, you know, people bring up the, the thought the Tablets of Thoth, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Trismegistus, right? Uh, you can look uh, that uh, up. Tehuti, yeah. Yeah, Tehuti, Trismegistus, yeah. it's his tablets. He talks about, you know, this, this is this being, right, this great mo- mental being, right? It's a, it's a mental working being. It's another creator deity. And this is what, why they would call people demigods. You have the creator, mm-hmm. that ultimate, and then you have these demis. Right, to create worlds. Mm-hmm. Y'all should pick up the uh, Arantra, uh, uh, Arantra, uh, Arantra papers, uh, and it'll talk to you. I, I might be mispronouncing that Arantra, Arantra papers, but pick that up. I read everything, and it's it's long as fuck. But it talks about something that I had tied together ultimately from another realm, and that thing just clarified it for me because it talks about how certain entities. Like being a human is is not a mean. It's a means to managing how to be this this fear that's wrapped up into this physical human body. But once you begin to manage things as a human, as that soul, that 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 microcosmic fear, ultimately as a consciousness, since energy doesn't die, it just changes shape, and you go on to exist in another form. It talked about how you know you know, eventually motherfuckers become planet somewhere. Or sometimes mm-hmm. people end up becoming an entity that in an energetic form creates worlds of their own. So mm-hmm. I know that's going, you know, that might that might have just fucked somebody up because I know you <laughs> might, you might have been there in a marriage. Hey. In, in, and I'm, I'm sorry oh. if I fucked you up with that. But, yeah. you know, yeah. hey, eventually you will the, get there. Right. But also, but also boys, Somebody got it. So yeah, those I know. who didn't get it, they're going to catch it. it. Yeah. yeah. Some, those yeah, who didn't they'll, get it, they, they, they'll get it later. And, yeah. and I, want, and it, I think that's a perfect segue into me stressing also that in my own evolution as just a, you know an entity playing this earth game with duality in this flesh, when, you know, I've, I've, I've bought books. I've opened the book up, read it, and I was like, okay, I got that, but uh, I don't really quite get it. Let me put this book down, and then I go off, I live my life, I find things other places, and I pick the book up again, and it makes completely, it makes all the sense to me. So just Mm -hmm. because, my point is, just because you don't understand something now doesn't mean get discouraged. It means, uh it's set an alignment for you. If you look at it right, if you don't look at it as somebody knowing something that you don't know, because this realm sets people up to be very insecure and, you know, they'd be like, oh, you know, if they don't understand it, they stay away from it because they don't like to feel like they don't understand something. When that's the best feeling, because that shows you, you got more growing to do. You know, earth is well, boring. Yeah. Hell. 
So That's what right. makes shit not boring, you know, think about how boring this shit is, especially if you think of the traditional sense of what life is supposed to be for a human. You know, you go to school for a certain amount of time. You know, you may work while you're going to school. Let's, let's just do it. Let's do, you know, young grade school. You go to school, you come home, you do your homework, you go to school, you take a fucking test, you come home, you go to sleep, you take a shower, you go to school, you do your homework. You might go on a date, you might go to a movie, but it's this, this it's very repetitious and it's boring as hell. And you, you get, you get, you know, more experience on earth, you get out of the school realms, you, you know, you have some kids, you feed your kids, you go, you know, you go to work. You come home, you cook dinner, you eat, you go to sleep. And it's the cycles of, like, being in a box. The only things that really give you a sense of new are your interests and where you place your focus. So if you're a person that feels bored, I guess this is my point, with life and shit, it's only a sign that growth is needed coming from your soul. I always look at boredom, and I've written something about this on my Facebook and I know it probably went over people's heads. Some some people probably got it. Like he says, is you know, loneliness is only a sign of stagnation. It's like this thing that it's like a trigger in the soul that's built in, like a alarm system that it only comes up and bubbles to the surface when we become stagnant and we're lonely. Right? Oh, I'm so lonely. Why the fuck you lonely? We got books. Mm. We got you know, you can get up, you can go outside, you can mm-hmm. call a friend. It's it's a it's loneliness is just a Walk your dog. an alarm system. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a it's an alarm system of a lack of movement. A lack of that's movement. All. I mean and it can be a movement towards anything. And that's why they say, you know, you know, lakes they move, right? That's a body of water and lakes can be very big. And they're, you know, they're big bodies of water, but they can be kind of dirty, too, because there is no real flow going on in that lake. It's isolated. But then you go down to a pond, right? A pond is very stagnant, and it's smaller, and it's dirty as fuck because it's a smaller body of water, and dirt and particles over time build up in that shit. And you don't want to drink no pond water. And I'm just saying (laughs) that. You know, we, 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 we say, you know, look to the nature for signs. You know, we like to say deep-ass fucking things that we ignore in our day-to-day lives. Like, look to nature. It gives you signs to what is. You know, when we want to sound deep, right? Mm-hmm. At, at, you but know, it's actually that the truth. It's like, you know, and you don't understand but, but that true. until you're actually in the situation where you need it. It's like, oh, crap. That shit is true. Yeah. It's like, oh, That's I should have known. So, so it's not a cliche is my point, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it, it, mm-hmm. the, the stagnant-ass pond is dead water, dirty water. It's bored. It's lonely. It would rather like to be attached to, you know, a river that leads to an ocean or some shit. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Then it would flow and get cleansed. It, it wouldn't be like that murky-ass fish tank that needs, you know, to be clean. You know, so so that's my point. Like, you know, it's all about keeping ourselves moving so we can keep going. Like I was talking to Angelica and I was like, so I'm not focusing on the moon and people around me and how they're, you know, driving crazy. Notice all the ambulance trucks just driving around for no reason without their alarms, without, without like seeming like they have a destination too. Like they know, like, like they know something is going to happen somewhere. We might as well be out because I pay attention to the realm, and I notice how sometimes I don't see them just driving around. And the one time I do see them is when the alarm, when they're going somewhere. But lately, mm-hmm. they're just driving around like, hey, it's only a matter of time. The moon's building, lunatic time. <laughs> you know, people are going to go crazy. Pressure is mounting. So a lot of people with terminal illnesses, that pressure is time for that gateway to open up. It's time to transcend. This is a time when a lot of transcending happens in terms of division, dividing from the flesh. A lot of elements in the body are inflamed around this time because of that extra body building that moon right above us. Like, hey, so, you know, just be mindful of all this stuff. And I think it's a perfect time to segue into questions and, and you know, ads or whatever. Again, if you're listening, we only have 34 minutes left. And just in case we do end up going into the after hours which is a point where it would just cut off and make conversation. You'll be listening and it'll just cut off. You would have to be on the line and to get on the line, that's 
5822. And what you do is you press 1 and a question mark pops up. If you don't press 1, that's cool too. You can just listen. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. No pressure. Just chill. Um, so I'm a, I don't know how we're going to do this in Helico because it's going to be new. I guess I'll call out the number and then you can just do the whole intro thing, you know, of like greeting them and stuff like that, however you want to do it. It's up to you. I don't know. Sure. This is my first time. It's not my, I don't know what to do. I'm so nervous. All right, go ahead. Are you serious? Okay. All right. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna be. I mean, I don't know. I mean, just like, hey, Wing what's it. going on? Yeah. You got hey, a question? Hey. Comment? What's 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 on your mind? Hey, we were talking about <laughs> growth, right? Eventually, you gonna have your own uh, show somewhere. Uh, you too brilliant not to. Too brilliant <laughs> not to. So you know why not? All right, so, um, yeah, um, area code 510, last four digits, 4489. Yep, that's me, Ebony. Hey, Ebony, what's up? What's up, sis? How are you guys doing? I'm doing good. I'm good, I'm chilling. Good. Okay, so my my question is, in relation to something that Boyd mentioned earlier about him being a Scorpio, which I am also a Scorpio as well. And you mentioned that Uh you mentioned that the things about Scorpio, you don't always be like, okay, yeah, I'm bad. I'm bad too. And I'm bad too. Like you don't fully, you know, take it in as far as who you are and what they're describing a Scorpio as. What were we going to say? I said I take it as a grain of salt because so – go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Oh, I, and I don't know if you wanted to know why I think of it that way. I kind of jumped in because I'm like, I got all this energy all of a sudden. Do we, I mean, I'm going to – Okay, okay, do you, okay. Do you okay. want me to, do you want okay. me, do you want me to elaborate? to where – I do want you to elaborate because I'm kind of okay. curious on which information you actually take in and which one you'd be like, no, I'm not actually going to take this in because a lot of the information that we're learning is either read or watched. So okay. All right. how so, do you know which so one to, re- like, digest? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something, and I'm going to have to start at the root of me and why I do this, right? So I understand. I start with when it comes to my sign. I start with chakras, right? It ties, just, just, just stick with me for a moment. And I, from my mm-hmm. understanding, the way I ingest the chakra system as is these are points in us that are either overactive or underactive in all these chakras, depending on their overactive or underactive, uh, you know, let's say, activity, determines how what things are active and what we're going to be overactive in in terms of as an individual from an individual standpoint that really uh, undermines the, the totality of the sign because um, it'll also say like the Scorpios are like for example it'll the one the, the thing that's highly publicized about us as Scorpios is that we're highly sexual beings right which is very mm-hmm. true at least in my case right but I'm going to balance that out by saying as time went on in my life and I began to balance myself out as an individual in terms of gaining wisdom and understanding, mm-hmm. what ends up happening is, is that sexual aspect of myself has been leveled off with wisdom to where it's true looked at as so mundane as how most people look at it. Like, yeah, I'm a very sexual person, but I look at it from a higher spiritual perspective. I'm not just going to go around and have sex with anything, right? I like to have mm-hmm. a hint in it all. So so it's balanced out there. When there's another person somewhere that could be a Scorpio and really could, since they have that root chakra, which is very overactive, and let's say they didn't balance out any of those crown aspects or the heart, because if the heart, if you get into your heart, you're going to balance out that root. You're not just going to be like a dog. You're going to want more emotional connection, right? 
And mm-hmm. you're gonna and if you're in that crown or in inside of any intellect along with being in your heart, you're gonna wanna be intellectually co- connected. So from the perspective of just looking at it so mundane from that perspective, you you end up being balanced out. You're not just what that says from that black and white perspective, right? It also mm-hmm. says that we we are very addictive, which is true. I'm I but I, like I said from from gaining wisdom in another area i w- i was able to understand myself which offset mm-hmm. me being addictive in to places that were destructive to where mm-hmm. that shit cancels out in a sense also but yet it, i can use it to my benefit it's like a superpower it's like mm-hmm. superman he's like he's strong right he can do all this shit but when that kryptonite comes He's just a normal man. So I, the way I look at what, what those negative aspects of our sign is I look at it as, as our kryptonite, right? But if you're a person mm-hmm. that's really working on building yourself as an individual, none of it really matters and none of it is going to be really exclusive to you from what, it, what you're reading because you're an individual working on different aspects of your soul and of your right. chakra and of mm-hmm. yourself. So it's not going to be so black and white. You see what I'm saying? It's not so right. black and white, mm-hmm. but yeah. you can use the benefits you see to your benefit. Right. Because a lot of times yeah, we that, that and we'd be like, yeah, go ahead. No, that makes sense because I also read that um, Scorpios jump into a lot of things versus thinking, get out first, as a weakness. So, but you see, but I, see, I didn't really. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm listening. Yeah. No, I'm listening. Yeah. Now, go ahead. Well, well, I was about to say, I tend to sit with things for a long time before I get into it. Mm-hmm. When I was younger, though, you see, when you're when you're green, mm-hmm. that's more so exactly. like a, a very immature kind of soul. Like, when I look at those black and white things, I look at them as like, okay, this is what an immature version of my sign looks like. As that soul, mm-hmm. if that soul is blessed enough to grow in mind and body and soul, they're going to grow out of some of these flaws. They're going to grow into some flaws. They're going to grow into some strengths, mm-hmm. and they may grow out of some strengths, determining on actions, reactions, and problems. Mm-hmm. And if right. they sit with themselves mm-hmm. and truly try to better themselves. Right. That's correct. Yeah. correct. And if I could add also, um, in looking at astrology, numerology, any science that's going to give you a, a basic understanding of yourself and what, what your capabilities are, what's coming towards you, I've always found that it's best to look in the mirror first. And you can get a chance to, to know, you know, if you pay attention to yourself, you know some of the things that you, uh, some of the buttons that, that if you allow someone to push them, will will push you overboard, or anything that will that that can set you off in any way. But the bottom line is that if you know yourself, and then apply what the flag the board mentioned, some of the aspects of, for instance, like we say Scorpio, you recognize that particular aspect. That there's a, there could be a tendency for that, but that's that's mm-hmm. really from a, a unevolved person, you know. And I'm I saying there's a lot of unevolved people here on the planet right now, but those mm-hmm. there are more people now who are who are really seeking to really find out more about themselves, and so that they can be a better version of themselves, and try to emphasize that on a daily basis. So it can sound mm-hmm. as though you you that type of a person. So along with the enclosure, uh, I was only saying that the more you know about yourself and knowing different aspects about your your template, because that's that's basically what astrology and numerology is, is basically a template. And I'm saying that you can't alter that template by recognizing some of the tendencies and say, nah, I've grown beyond that. Um that's good. I'm gonna keep that, you know. So it's uh, it's what you want to do, you know. Right. Because uh, the way 
you know, when I was first going into the knowledge, it's, uh, we used to have a saying that said, um, self, I self, Lord and Master. That's, that actually spells Islam. But I self, Lord and Master, meaning that, you know, you yourself is your master. You know, mm-hmm. and how you deal with situations. So it's it's, a, it's all up to you. Mm. Oh, D over here breaking breaking down uh, codexes for folks. You just fucked up somebody' reality. With that, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, really. what? Huh? That's what people like. What? Oh what? my god, I never knew that. I yeah. never knew that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, another thing, Ebony, too. Like you mentioned. Uh, that jumping into different things. Let me let's flip that and let's see. That's why I don't read these things a lot of times because they show you all the negative shit. And if we know that the yeah. universe is mental and I self mm-hmm. law is master, right? And your mind mm-hmm. is what you you your realm is what you put your mind to. Why am I going to even take that shit in? I'm going to look. Right. At, I'm going to look at myself and I'm going to say, Yo, this shit gets me into trouble here. This aspect of me cannot benefit me here anymore. And I'm going to do it inside mm-hmm. out instead of outside in because what happens is, is you right. read that, that writing on that blog and that's a spell. Remember, anything written mm-hmm. is spelled out. It's a spell to go into the projector, which is the mind that projects out things. Remember, the universe is mental. You create from a mental space. You know, so, so you read that spell. Now you start projecting that spell like, yeah, so... I jump into things without thinking, and then what can happen to some is they can really take on that shit because a spell is also a spirit. You know, like you can read a description and take on that spirit. But what I what I wanted to say is look at the positive aspect of jumping into things without thinking because I wouldn't be here speaking if I didn't jump into a whole bunch of different shit without thinking in terms of information. Mm-hmm. You see, a lot of people. Mm-hmm. They got they get they get caught into cultural boxes and uh, religious boxes and intellectual boxes and uh, uh, you know they they tend to stay away from certain realms of information because they're like oh no I'm this I'm supposed to stay away from that you see oh oh no. The world where I dwell in, that's considered pseudo. No, no, no. That's beneath me. Which is me. I have no judgment with those things. So I read everything. I listen to just about any. If somebody, if I see an interesting title touches me, I stay longer. And then what I do is, is I see how what they're saying. Because what keeps me in a place is if it's, they say something I've thought of before. Because Mm -hmm. I'm always looking for, another source that's thought of something in mind, not for a source to think like, if that makes sense. Like, mm-hmm. a lot of times mm-hmm. people are trying to find themselves and finding a template to mirror their thoughts off of. Me, I'm trying to find, I'm thinking things so much, I'm trying to see where someone said something that I thought of, therefore I can kind of just be like, okay, so, boom. There must be, because if you look at a scientist, right, they do an experiment multiple times, the frequency in which that, that thing repeats itself shows them that this experiment has a percentage of accuracy that seems to be plausible for it to be uh, a foregone conclusion, right? So I look at mm-hmm. how if, if, if many people are having the same kind of thoughts in different spaces without being in contact with each other, there must be some validity to that thought I had. So that ties back to them saying we jump into things without thinking. Now, when I was younger, yeah, I did that. The way that's a benefit, because there's two sides to every coin, right? The way Mm -hmm. that's a benefit is I'll jump into uh, the title of a book being associated with something that some society group or some cultural group or some, some organization deems, you know, not worthy of your attention. I don't pay attention to that. I go look and see for my damn self. And that's how that benefits me in terms of my growth as an individual, right? Mm-hmm. You, you know, so even even just thinking of, like, how they call us sexual beings, too, in terms of just speaking to you since you're a Scorpio, the way that benefited me at this point is I've yet to have kids. So since I, I didn't have kids yet and, you know, I plan to, 
being a Scorpio and having those intellectual, deep, occult kind of thoughts and interests that are also tied to us made me Mm -hmm. tie, you know, greater intent to my ritual of when I decide to have kids, meaning, you know, what sign I want them Mm -hmm. to be, not leaving that to chance. You know, I I want Mm -hmm. to have, I know, I know, you know, I have a good idea of a beneficial sign just for an entity to come onto this earth to have. So, you know, I could at least try to, I could, I can, you know, we know it takes nine months. So why not become Mm -hmm. a creator in all ways? Always, exactly. instead of leaving it to yeah. chance. If it, if it takes nine months, now I can do the math, and I can make an entity come in with a certain kind of uh, star alignment above it, which, mm-hmm. you know, I vibe with Scorpios. Like, my grandmother's a Scorpio, never questions me. Never, she, every time I talk to her, she's just like, what's up? It's like we got this, <laughs> this thing. This, we don't have to say nothing. She gets me. Mm-hmm. So it's like, if I got to raise a little badass soul that's going to be bad in the beginning, right, until they grow and evolve, if I got to help that soul evolve, right, by nurturing it and protecting it so it can do its own individual work, I know to make it easier on me is if it's a Scorpio. Mm-hmm. That's at least one. My sister's sign is another. I believe my sister's a Leo. And just the way I, the way we interact, I'm like, yo, I wouldn't mind having a Leo kid either. Because there's no like class going on there. So, so like the fact that they say we're sexual, when you add other aspects to yourself that apply to the Scorpio, you become a greater like uh, planner. Mm-hmm. D, is that I got some feedback coming from somebody's phone. That I don't know, but anyways, oh. so there's like a benefit to everything too. Not only that, like mm-hmm. I, you know, I started since I have that thing that they call the sexual, you know, uh, like energy that's on us as Scorpios. I looked into books like tantric books, right, or you know, books that talk about how you can uh, use that sexual energy instead of always releasing it. So. Mm-hmm. When you you become balanced and you're not like just because I feel like when most people mention us, it's like this very mundane, like oh yeah, they sexual. It's like mm-hmm. yeah, but mm-hmm. have a conversation, have, oh, yeah. have a conversation, have a conversation with me, and let's see what you think then, right? You know what I mean? Because yeah, that's true, but you leaving out a lot of me by just focusing on that, and I get offended. Mm-hmm. I'm the type that can get yeah, a little offended too. when. When somebody doesn't see the totality of who I am, because it's like, yo, I'm more than that basic shit you talking about. It is you know, very so. irritating. It's it is annoying, especially when I was younger, and guys would be like, "Oh yeah, what's your sign?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, I'm a Scorpio." Just saying who I am as part of me, they'd be like, "Oh yeah, you a freak." Oh, you're done. Yeah, like that's irritating. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. When you um, when you grow up and shit and you out you know some people that shit is very appealing to another person they may there's a Scorpio somewhere that may feed off of representing themselves as a Scorpio because of the the mystique of being the sexual being what that entails mm-hmm. the attention that may bring to them and they're see, they're mm-hmm. using their sign a completely different way than I am or than you are so that's why I right. think that whole basic little reading. As, as a grain of salt. Also, when you look at the greater thing when it comes to astrology as our birth charts, I mm-hmm. tend to look at that as, you know, certain things are in certain places and stronger for me because I understand I haven't lived once. Like, I'm not looking for somebody who has some kind of credentials to tell me, you've lived more than once as a human. I already know. So if I already know that, I can use my own discernment and tie that to mm-hmm. why the birth chart has strengths in certain areas for me. Mm-hmm. And I'm a Scorpio, right? But when your mm-hmm. sign, certain signs and certain strengths are going to be placed in certain areas. And you're going to be a Scorpio with a different kind of template make just from a birth chart perspective. So that whole basic reading you get when you look it up 
is very really mm. it's really for intermediate it's 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 really for like uh the ground entrance kind of person that's getting themselves acclimated to the idea of having some kind of greater script written for them based off of astrology. Yeah. Mm. Or may I add more like someone in kindergarten. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they they just they hadn't grown beyond mm-hmm. you know, their, their their own limitations. You know, they're still knowing learning themselves. And I'm mean, gonna also must say and with with Scorpio being the tenth sign, ten you know, and and also the Scorpio itself is being that that water sign, and it being the tenth sign, if you tie that to numerology, it's more or less like you all have been. Um, from a, a energetic standpoint, have been around the block a couple of times, so you know exactly. how things go. You know how things go. So there's no you, your your masculinity or your femininity is not an issue. You you confident in that. That's what it's really saying. You're confident in in your in your sexuality, not not. Not that you're overly sex. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Mm-hmm. That's the way I see it. And another thing to tie to that being around the block a couple of times thing because you know it is a uh, they they tie to us that occult uh, interest, which is only a result of being around the block a couple of times too. Because there's some souls that never have, and when I'm saying occult. The word means hidden, y'all, okay? So let's lose the – I'm not talking to you, Ebony. I'm just saying for somebody listening that's hung up on words, occult means uh-huh. hidden. So I'm talking – when I say occult, I'm Look talking about Look it up. The, things, the, the things that are hidden from most, basically. Mm-hmm. So the reason why we get, we're get we attracted to that is because we've been around the block a couple of times to have – had time to have deeper thought while walking on earth. There's somebody walking on earth right now that has no thought that, that leaves the surface. So they're, they're simply into the inquiring of materials and that's cool, but that's a representation of uh, how long ones, how, how long, you know, they're, they're very young or they're old soul and they just haven't, they're so tuned that they've been down here multiple times and they stuck like a motherfucker. So they haven't realized that this, this, everything is layered. They tell us this is a multidimensional reality that there might be, they'll, they'll say there might be multidimensions. You might exist <laughs> on multiple planes, right? They say all this shit mm-hmm. and we'd be like, yeah, mm-hmm. they say it is multi, but then we like lose it when it comes to our life. Right. This apply, this, mm-hmm. this means from a human perspective, there's somebody that never leaves the surface dimension in terms of what they're interested in. When, and that, that could possibly be them being a young soul, meaning they only been here a couple times, they old soul and they stuck. But if you've been here a couple times, each time you pick up where you left off. So you mm-hmm. have, you know, there's somebody That's here that has many lifetimes to get out of. I know what that, that is. The only thing that matters is physical, physical things. So you begin to get interest into things of the occult, things of the spiritual nature. It comes, oh, yeah. it takes time because there's, it goes back to me telling you that there's people that are listening, they're watching my mirrors video where I'm just talking about how people cast spells on themselves using mirrors because they look in the mirror, which focuses your energy back towards you. And they're thinking fucked up shit about themselves, looking at themselves in the mirror, not realizing they're recycling the energy back to themselves mm-hmm. because your your focus is yourself. That's your right. Focus is, 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 is your focus is literally you. So okay. so you're yep. looking at yourself and you're spelling yourself with these words. Not only that is that a mirror holds energy. So the people that lived in your house prior to you, if they had a lot of insecurities and they've been looking in that mirror, you could have been fine and never had insecurity until you moved into that fucking house and started looking in the mirrors of the people that lived in that house prior to you with the insecurities and you start, you're absorbing, you're getting that reflection back thinking it's your own spirit when it's not. Can you believe Mm. I'm explaining this Mm. very elementary, 
there are people who they're still on the surface to where what I'm saying is completely unplausible to them somehow. And they're like, shut up. Oh, my gosh. Why can't a mirror just be a fucking mirror? And I'm like, yo. I, you know, I'm not even going to respond because I understand the babies. You understand? Mm-hmm. I don't care how old you are. The baby soul who hasn't That's had right. time to get into levels of deeper levels of human existence, intellectual mm-hmm. thought, spiritual shit. It's, they're, they're very they're on the surface still. So shit is very surface value. Everything is surface value. Right. They're seeing the book by its cover. They're seeing people as just flesh. They're not understanding energy. They're not understanding thoughts or intention, that thoughts are things, that the universe is mental, that, a, that we're nothing but microcosmic representations of the universe, which the universe is nothing but a macro, macro form of an atom. And we're made up of atoms. So we're actually millions of atoms, which are nothing but micro versions of the universe that make up this thing that is us. And it's like, you know... I can just play in that, play that whole game. Uh, let me stop because yeah, I can, you can go, go forever play in that, in that yeah. shit yeah. forever yeah. in that. I can just yeah. Let me, yeah. Let me shine yeah. a little bit more light. I, I um, I want to share this with you and Boyd, uh, Ebony, in regards to Scorpio. And that. Um, my wife and I, our, our youngest daughter is Scorpio, and when she was oh, four years that. old, four years old, somehow I, I don't know what it happened. I didn't let her do something, and she was she got mad. She said, "I started not to pick you all for my parents." This is when she was four years no. old. You heard what I said, right? You see? Yeah, yeah. So I remember you that told let me. You know, yeah, so that let me know from there. That that verified. I already knew. I heard heard information in regards to that, but that that was my first experience. Actually, was in that that that, that realm where you know, verifying that people come back, you know, yep. to to this to this earthly experience, with, because we are actually hey. spirit. And, hey, and and you, and you the, know what? And, 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 mm-hmm. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Keep your spirit. No, no, back. no I, I was I was about to say that you know the our physical body it's, it's a vehicle. It's a car. But mm-hmm. our true self is our spirit. But that, that, that's all I want to share with you. And you prompted something that just came to me, and I've never thought of that before. So it must be the spirit, right? Uh, regarding, I'm getting some feedback from somewhere. Uh, regarding the sun, people don't un- forget that it's a wheel, and they they don't understand because no one's ever said it before that. Okay, we live in a solar system, which means there's souls. Like we, we, some people, you may know that when you transition, you get into this limbo state before you come back, right? But what I'm going to say now is that certain souls can only be certain signs, determining uh, by the, the the. I'm not saying one's greater than the other, but what I'm saying is by by what they what they built up in energy up to to that incarnation. So like when the soul's limbo what is that? Hold on. Hey, hello. Hello? I'm yeah, here. I'm here. I'm here. It's not me. What is it's that? not me. Angelica. Yeah, I'm here. Is that you? Yeah. No, I'm not outside anywhere. I hear it. It's like somebody was outside doing something. I don't know. I don't know what that is. But anyway, certain certain souls in limbo will come in because, remember, even the vessel you create with your significant other by your DNA is going to have an energy resonance that a soul of a lesser or greater energy body could not sustain. So, So only certain souls... Certain souls can incarnate into certain gene pools, determining the mix of those genes that come together, and can be certain signs determining, uh, like, what they've experienced in their other life cycles. So that goes back to, like, being around the block again and how some people, you know, aren't yet 
on a you know thinking of certain things because they will eventually. It just may take them some time, and that's all I was going to say. Mm. It all but makes yeah. sense. It all makes sense. Yeah. Be- yeah. Um, and you'll see, you'll see uh, that whole thing about certain souls. I'm sorry, let me say this one last thing real quick. About certain mm-hmm. souls not being able to sustain certain bodies. If you even watch just a basic TV show like Supernatural, when every time an archangel is about to come into Earth, they, now let's take away the fact that they're archangels now and let's see what they're showing you. Just incarnation. Mm. Every, every time one is about to come, come into Earth, the vessels, they have these certain vessels that can only sustain their energy body, I mean their energy frequency. And if they get into one, that's not the right one, they can only stay in that body for a certain amount of time before the body begins to deteriorate at a fast rate. So that, that what that's showing you, what they're trying to say through all the drama and all the, like, spook and stuff, they're, they're showing you something that's already a given, that DNA, because we know that, that I'm going to have kids to keep my gene pool running just in case I want to come back to Earth. That's, a, that's a, one of the reasons. If I want to come back to Earth... I can still come in through my gene pool because if my gene pool has gone, I can't come back through. And this is why on a subconscious level, they used to say if you had one son, they couldn't go into the military because the thought that, that name would die off. The bloodline mm. of the male would die off. See, they don't even know mm. why they're doing this shit. You see, because that, that, that gene yeah. pool... It die off if you can't if that male isn't splicing his genes with a female over and over again. So so like if I don't if you don't have kids and you don't have cousins, that if that gene pool isn't present on the earth, then you can't come back in because you can only come in through your gene pool. Mm. Very very yeah. interesting. That's deep. I didn't know that. Yep. So, yeah, and we we got about a minute left, and, and nobody else has their hand up. I don't know if you guys have anything you want to say, D and Helga. No, I thought that was freaking awesome. I mean, you know, I agree with you guys, and I don't have anything to add, really. You know, I think it was great. D. I don't know what the D is, but but yeah, thank thank you for. Uh, you got anything else you want to say or, or any other questions, Ebony? Oh no, that that was it. Aww. appreciate you. Well, appreciate thanks, you, call, Ebony, calling in and stuff, and you, my fellow Scorpio. We, you know, Scorpios, cool. Like I, I vibe with Scorpios. Like a lot of my close, like. People that I just feel like we have an understanding without words. They're always Scorpio. Yeah. Mhm. They're, they're always Scorpio. It's like we get each other with on a telepathic level. Uh, my grandma is a pr- prime example, man. Like every time I speak to my grandmother, it's always refreshing because it's like somebody that don't question you, that could if they wanted to because they have you know they're older than you. But it's like, you know, we just vibe. It's always been that way. And then I have a couple of other friends exactly. that Scorpio. I know exactly what you're talking about. I do. It is a, it is an unspoken language. It is. And honestly, most Scorpios that I do come across are hella cool. So, yeah. We just be we just be chilling. A lot of times people Yeah. people looking are looking at us, judging us wrong. A lot of the times, and I I learned that growing up because a lot of times growing up I was just minding my own business. That's what we do at Scorpio. We mind oh, our yeah, own business. And we got certain things. What, what, what were you about to say? I was going to say that, and that's also part of being the most underestimated sign because people are already assuming with their own personal thought. So I feel like um, yeah. I feel like, like I said, we're underestimated and um, not really understood. We're not understood. Look, so. Hey, Ebony, let me tell you something, though. You, you, you go to, you find the right book. 
or the right pulse somewhere. Not all, not everybody underestimating us because they'll also say that the Scorpio, uh, which you really don't mean nothing this term really, is very prone to be what our realm calls genius. So not everybody in, is is underestimating the Scorpio, and I would say that it, that would only manifest because of that ability to try different things. See, I don't see a genius as somebody who regurgitates a lot of fucking information. I look at it as more like our IQ from not like who's the president of the United States in this date, mm-hmm. but like IQ in terms of holistic uh absorption of information and understanding of the information one has absorbed and knowing how to apply that to their own life and in their reality and how to try to connect to that. That's what a genius is to me, which can be anybody, but they do ultimately say, you know, there's a lot of people who just have formulas and they just know the formulas. It's not fucking genius. If we're going to go back on the term they use, but since society has likes to, like, deem certain things, certain things so people can, like, stay on a certain path. They got you thinking people that memorize stuff are geniuses when they're just basically, you know, a couple, you know, they're greater steps above a parakeet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, my, you, you can go and find a parakeet that can say everything you just told it, but it's not going to be able to connect, connect dots in uh, areas that are seemingly non-associated with each other. You see, that, that, that's a common trait of what they call genius, which I think in etymology or at some point refers to just being like a genie, too. If you look back far enough, they get genius from the word genie, which you know what a genie means. Um, something that can give you three wishes. So why would they call... Why would genie and genius be associated with each other? Because what they call a genius in this realm is going to be able to create opportunity, which Mm -hmm. to a person looking to create wealth for themselves, just from the Aladdin perspective of finding a a genie, Mm -hmm. having three wishes, if you find a genie, a genius, and you work with them, you're, you're going to, the chances are that you're going to be successful also, right? So it's like you're getting mm-hmm. three wishes. You see that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting. Like, we just start seeing how they place these certain things out. But, yeah, you know, so not everybody's underestimating you, Ebony. Just certain, just people that have a certain level of, like, understanding, they are, of course, but... You, mm-hmm. you you go in the other realms and they'll they'll, they'll probably know we know you coming before you get there, you know because a lot of people ask you your sign. I remember mm-hmm. Angelica didn't want to give her sign her birth date to somebody because you know <laughs> some people <laughs> will will do in depth research on you and kind of anticipate. You can anticipate somebody by their sign mm-hmm. if they are like a, if they're like on a surface plane kind of, kind of frequency you can anticipate them because the chances that they're they're playing too far to the left and too far from the right from that basic description in this world we live in where leaving the beaten path is very rare that's slim right mm-hmm. so by knowing your sign you can kind of tell what to expect from certain people if they are on a very like basic level of their you know their growth not meaning that from a dissing perspective I'm not talking about mm-hmm. like from like you know rapping like calling somebody basic I'm just speaking about it from like the definition of the term like mm-hmm. just simply from identifying shit like a scientist not from trying to place another person above another person just like a very right. like grade level kind of soul if you know their sign and you know you know if you can, they tell you show me your friends and I can tell you a person why because you're not you're not straying too far away from those friends right so if I can if you tell mm-hmm. me your sign and I already know and know you and see that your actions don't flay too far out from this basic alignment your sign, if I read your sign, it'll tell me a lot about you because you're pretty much set. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah, you know. That makes sense. But thank mm-hmm. Yeah. But thank you for joining us, Ebony. Hope to you know, it's always good. I feel like you've been you've been with us before. Yeah, I think yeah, here. I just I just listen a lot. Sometimes I don't always um ask questions, I just be listening too. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's up. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Thanks, Ebony. Spending your night with her. You're you welcome, know. sis. Yeah. And um, so I guess we're going to close out on time tonight, or kind of on time, six minutes out. <laughs> uh, so, and, and Helica, why don't you give out your info so anyone new, because I'm sure we got new people from YouTube, come from YouTube, they can get a hold of you. Let them know what you do this time, too. Like, let them know how you get down over there in your lab, your, your laboratory. My, lab- <laughs> my, you, my you know. little creative space. Um, yeah, I create, you know, a lot of different things. And, you know, what I've been kind of focused on this year is uh, really my Oregon gem. And, you know, Oregon creation, which... Uh, basically cleanses your external and internal space by transforming negative vibrations and energy into positive energy. So, you know, that's what I do, and I love what I do. I enjoy it. And you can find me on social media. That's uh, Facebook, Instagram, um, and Twitter at serenitycmd.com. And my website is www.serenitycmd.com. And my email is angel at serenitycmd.com. Okay, cool. And, oh, before before I give out the show's info, uh, Angelica, Oregon Duck, Rule commented on YouTube and said that he is a dude, <laughs> and he said he appreciate everybody too. So I wanted to let you know that. I wanted to let you know that he said he appreciate everybody. So shout out to Oregon Dogs Rule, and we appreciate you too, man, for you know coming through and being interactive and all that kind of cool stuff. Um, so if you have any questions or any kind of topic suggestions. You can email the show at take the night radio at gmail dot com and you can find us on YouTube at Take the Night. If you put in search like pages, just it's just take the night. Um you can also find us on Twitter, Take the Night. And you can find us on Facebook. The page, the Facebook page for the radio show is Take the Night Radio and that's at Take the Night Radio. And you can find me on Instagram at it's simply boy, and you can find me on Twitter at it's simply boy, and you can find me on Facebook at Boyd Coleman Ransom. That's Boyd Coleman Hyphen Ransom. And for anybody that may listen to this and they're commenting on YouTube on my channel, uh, I'm gonna get to the positive, you know, comments and respond to everybody in due time. I've been doing it and stuff like that, so don't think I'm leaving you hanging and stuff like that. And I appreciate the insight and all that and hopefully you listen to Take the Night and join the Take the Night family and we appreciate everybody for coming through and hell I'll be speaking to you sometime soon. Lady you stay you stay progressive over there, stay creating. All right. I will definitely try. All right. And you know, hit me up if you know anything. Yeah. Um yeah, thanks for uh tuning in with us tonight, y'all. Have a good week. I'll take the night. 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 Yes, you have a heart that's divine. The loving you all, girl, you mind. Eternity's ours, yeah, you're mine We'll live a life, I'll take the night